ever just find yourself somewhere you think you know, like back of your hand, and then bam, something totally unexpected jumps out at you. Happens all the time. Like I'm talking, picture this Oyston's fish fry last Friday, smell of grilled marlin, you know how it is. And I overhear these guys, these Bajan guys debating, get this 3D printed fishing lures. Wow, no way. Fishing lures 3D printed right here in Barbados, blew you me away. I was like, this is bigger than we realized. Yeah, it really makes you think. And it got me thinking about this whole 3D printing thing, how fast it's changing everything. Which brings us to today's deep dive. I'm excited to dig into this one. We're cracking open this Nation newspaper piece, The Emperor's New 3D Printed Clothes. <laughs> Catchy, right? Definitely grabs your attention. But it makes you wonder, are we looking at a game-changing technology or just a bunch of hype? It's a powerful metaphor the author's using. Makes you think about those fairy tales. Yeah. Seeing through appearances, Asking the tough questions. Right. Don't want to be caught with our pants down, so to speak. Exactly. And in this case, it's all about the Barbadian government's plan to start licensing 3D printers. Licensing? Huh. My first thought was, okay, regulating guns makes sense. Seems logical on the surface. But this article, it really digs deep into how 3D printing's way more than just guns and how this whole licensing thing could actually backfire big time. The author makes a really compelling argument, acknowledging that misuse can happen. I mean, 3D printed firearms, oh, it's yeah. a global concern. Governments are definitely worried. Rightfully so. But they also say that blanket import licensing, it might not be the right answer, especially when you factor in the potential upsides, what they call democratized manufacturing. Okay, democratized manufacturing. You lost me a little there. Break it down for me. So picture this. You, me, even the owner of that fish fry skull, we could all be making our own stuff on demand. Wait, hold up. You're like, I could just print out a new grill. Not the whole grill. Yeah. Maybe not yet, at least. But a replacement part, definitely. Mind blowing. Need a new fish scaler. Hmm. New design. Print it. Wow. And this isn't just about trinkets, right? Right, right. This is about giving power back to individuals, mm -hmm. small businesses, letting them create what they need when they need it. That's powerful. No more waiting on shipments, no relying on those big factories thousands of miles away. Exactly. Game changer, especially for an island nation like Barbados, so reliant on imports. The author brings up a really interesting example. Imagine a piece of farm machinery breaks down. Yeah, what happens then? Instead of waiting weeks for a part to be shipped from overseas, yeah. what if you could just 3D print one right there on the farm? Ooh, that's next level. Think about it. The impact on productivity costs, our whole reliance on global supply chains. And don't even get me started on inflation. Right, exactly. If we can produce things locally, wouldn't that take some of the pressure off prices? In theory, absolutely. So it's a win-win, right? Everyone's happy. Well, not so fast. Oh, what's catch? Like any big shift, there are always two sides to the story. Makes sense. Large-scale manufacturers, those big factories, they might argue that this whole democratization thing it's a threat to their entire business model. I can see how that might ruffle some feathers. Big factories, they thrive on economies of scale, right. right? The more they make, the cheaper it gets. Exactly. So this whole idea of localized on-demand manufacturing, yeah, it kind of throws a wrench in that model. So is it a case of one replacing the other? Big factories versus 3D printers? The author seems to be saying, it's not that simple. It's more about Finding where 3D printing fits into the bigger picture of manufacturing. Finding that balance. Exactly. And this is where the article gets really interesting because it zooms in on Barbados and our unique situation. Right. Being an island it comes with its own set of challenges. Challenges, yes. Yeah. But those challenges also make the potential of 3D printing even greater. Right. Like our reliance on imports makes us vulnerable to those supply chain disruptions. We've all felt that, especially recently. And that's exactly where 3D printing could be a game changer. The author makes a big point of saying, this isn't just some abstract tech debate. This is about how Barbados steps up, how we position ourselves yeah. in a world that's changing faster than ever. Yeah, we got to keep up. We really got to be smart about it, right? Exactly. Finding that balance between embracing the new and not just, you know, throwing open the doors to anything and everything. Which is where I guess regulations come in. Right. And this is where the article takes a really interesting turn. It gets into the nitty gritty, the technical side of things. OK, let's talk tech. What's the author saying? Instead of trying to regulate every single 3D printer, they say the government should focus on specific materials used in this printing process. So like not all plastic is created equal. Exactly. 
Think of it this way. You have some filaments like PLA. They're great for everyday stuff, toys even. Right. But they wouldn't hold up in something like a firearm. Makes sense. Then you've got your high strength filaments like carbon fiber. Yep. Incredibly strong, great for certain applications, but also potentially a concern when it comes to, you know, things we don't want to see happening. So the author's saying, regulate the carbon fiber of the 3D printing world, not every printer on the island. That's the gist, yeah. Hmm. Seems like it would be tough to enforce, though, right? I mean, how do you stop someone from, I don't know, ordering the bad filament online? Valid point. And the author does acknowledge that there are definitely logistical hurdles, monitoring imports, preventing workarounds. Well, it's not to mention all the 3D printers already out there before any regulations even come into effect. Right. It's a complex issue. No easy solutions. And it kind of makes you wonder, has the government thought this through? All the angles? It reminds me of that part in the article where the author talks about the, the ghost of regulations past, something like that. Ah, uh, yes. They bring up some interesting examples. Drones, medicinal cannabis even aviation. Right. Like, we've been down this road before in Barbados, new technology pops up, and we don't always get the regulations quite right. It's a common story, not just in Barbados, but globally. New technologies emerge, disrupt things, and existing regulations just can't keep up. So, are we destined to repeat the mistakes of the past? The author seems to be saying we don't have to. They urge the government to learn from those past experiences to proceed with caution, because if we don't, this whole 3D printing thing, it could end up like those other examples, mm. more hype than substance. Stuck in regulatory limbo. Exactly. And to really drive home this point about learning from the past, the author takes us back to the early days of personal computing in Barbados. Oh, man, taking it way back. I remember those big clunky computers with the, what was it, the green text on a black screen? Exactly. Yeah. And back then... It wasn't a given that everyone would have a computer. Right. Imagine if back then the government had said, okay, we need licenses for every single computer imported. Wow. It could have stifled the whole thing, the growth of the tech sector in Barbados. And you might still be using typewriters. And that's the parallel the author draws. Yeah. They're asking, what if we approach 3D printing with the same kind of open-mindedness, forward thinking that we eventually applied to personal computing? It's a good question, right? What if? What kind of future could we create if we approach this whole thing with a bit more, I don't know, optimism, it makes you think this is about way more than just printers and filaments. It's about vision strategy, you know, how we navigate this whole new world. Exactly. And the author, they're not saying they have all the answers. Right. But they're definitely getting people talking. Right. Which is important. Yeah. Starting the conversation. Because it's a tough one. Finding that balance. We want to encourage innovation. But we can't be reckless either. And let's face it, no matter what we do, 3D printing is here to stay. Right. It's not going away. It's like that old saying, you can't put the genie back in the bottle. Exactly. So the question is, what are we going to do with it? How do we, as a nation, as a society, harness this technology? Yeah. Make it work for us? And that's the big question, isn't it? It's not just about regulations. It's about education investment creating an environment where these new ideas they can actually take root and grow absolutely it reminds me of when we really embraced mobile technology here in barbados oh yeah that happened fast suddenly everyone had a smartphone businesses were changing their whole way of doing things exactly and it wasn't just luck it took effort people had to be willing to try something new yeah to adapt and the author seems to be saying we're at a similar point now with 3d printing like a crossroads Exactly. Mm. And the path we choose, it's going to determine a lot. Leaders or followers. Precisely. And the author, they end the article with this really striking image. Oh. They talk about the government strolling down Broad Street, 3D printed clothes. Uh, Can you it, picture it? That's a powerful image. I love it. It's like they're saying, don't just talk about the future. Walk the walk. Embrace it. Exactly. It's a call to action. Yeah. A reminder that, yeah, there are risks. Right. But there's also this incredible opportunity mm -hmm. just waiting for us. So where do we go from here? What would it take for Barbados to really become a 3D printing powerhouse? It's a question worth asking. Yeah. Not just for Barbados, but for the entire world. Mm. How do we navigate this new era, this technological revolution in a way that benefits everyone? Look at that. Big questions. And like you said, no easy answers. That's what makes it interesting, right? Absolutely. That's what the deep dive is all about.
diving into the deep end, exploring the complexities. And hopefully coming out the other side with a little more understanding. A little more wisdom. Big thanks to The Nation newspaper for getting this conversation started. Always thought-provoking. And to you, our listeners, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, stay curious, friends. The future is waiting.